Why do I love pattern paper so much? And how come when I use a paper pad, I always end up with amazing looking cards? Today I'm going to discuss about pattern papers while making five cards using one paper pad. So first of all, paper pads are really inexpensive. This is the 6x6 paper pad by Stamperia. It's their Christmas patchwork collection and it is less than $10. In the pages of a paper pad you do find focal points as well as backgrounds to create your cards. The size of a 6x6 paper pad is perfect for a standard card and everything you will use from the same paper pad matches perfectly together. And if you don't like fuzzy cutting, in the same collection, no matter which brand of paper pad you are using, you will always find die cuts or other elements that you can play with to embellish your cards, again with everything matching. For demonstration reasons for this video, I do have these die cuts from this same collection. These are lovely chipboard die cuts, nice and thick, and uh, they are again less than $10. But keep in mind that for all the five cards that I'm going to make today, although I will mix some of these die cuts, you can totally make them by just using the 6x6 paper, since you will find the exact same images on the pad. You will just have to do a little bit of more fuzzy cutting. So here is for example one of the angels from the chipboard set and here is uh, how it looks on the paper which is exactly the same size. Usually paper pads come in uh, other sizes as well like 8x8 or 12x12 so you can have the same images in a larger format. You can definitely fuzzy cut one of the angels from that paper or you can use one of the chipboards in the pack. Either size would work for the card design that I'm going for and just, and just to save some time and not having to fuzzy cut everything, I'm just going to go with one of the chipboard angels. I picked one of the background papers that I was sure that the angel, the colors of the angel are going to stand out against that nicely and I'm going to cut it to be a small rectangle, smaller than my actual card. I did use one of my rectangle dies but you can definitely use your paper trimmer. Now since the look and feel of these uh, designs are kind of uh, vintage, I'm going to ink up the edges with a vintage photo and for all of the cards that I'm making today I'm going to keep my supplies to minimal so you will be able to recreate these cards by just using your scissors and some adhesive. You can definitely omit the ink, ink that I'm doing now. So I'm working on a craft card base and I'm just going to ink up the edges as well. I do love dimension, that's why I'm going to stick this panel on top of my card base by using foam tape at the back. And then all I have to do is to stick my focal point on top. Either it is the chipboard that I'm going with now or the angel that you fuzzy cut from that pattern paper included in the pad. I am just using glue to stick my chipboard pieces on top of my paper and um, I don't really need to add foam tape here, although I do love dimensions since those chipboards are already thick and they do give a lovely look. In the paper pad you always find some elements to work as your sentiments and I'm going with Noel from this paper. I'm going to just cut around all those letters so that I can put them together on top of my card. There is one extra banner, a sentiment banner that says it's Christmas time which I'm going to use as well. I'm also going to use my scissors and cut out a few borders from the paper pad. Remember that this is a patchwork collection so little bits and pieces that you stick here and there are going to add to the whole look and feel. Plus, you already know that whatever you're going to use from the same paper pad, it's going to match perfectly with all the elements that you have already on your card. So I did use the little letters that I cut out and put together the word Noel. And I'll keep on adding a few more uh, paper pieces that I cut out just to dress it up a little bit more and add to that patchwork look. If you don't know where to start with card making, then definitely you need to start with a paper pad that gives you backgrounds as well as focal points. You don't need stamps, you don't need ties, you don't need anything. Just do what I'm doing here today on this video and you will end up with beautiful looking cards and lots of them out of one 6x6 paper pad. Here are some close-up photos on the first card for today with that beautiful angel and the star. 
And let's move on and make another card. Sometimes pattern paper is so beautiful that you can just cut out a piece and stick it on top of a card, you are ready to go. But I always like to take it a step further. I like to add some dimension and make my card special. That's why I tend to use my rectangle ties and just try and find how it will work on top of a card. You can see here, I try to audition whether I would like to go with a portrait or with a landscape card and both of them would work just fine. So in any case, just because I like to have dimension, I want to pop the houses on top of my card and I'm going to fuzzy cut all around them. This is definitely the technique I go for when I see a lovely focal point on top of a paper. So I need to pop those uh, houses on top of something, that's why I'm creating a background instead of using a ready-made one from the paper, but I'm just being frugal here. So I started with a black cardstock and I'm going for a night sky, I'm going to ink up the background a little bit with Distress Oxide in purple and blue. I don't want to add too much, after all I do already have that uh, black at the background that makes it come together nicely. To follow the same look and feel as the rest of the cutouts, I'm going to do some stamping on top of my background. For that, I will go with this Stress Oxide thing, and that's uh, anti cleaner which is going to stay nice and light on top of the dark background. You can always do that with pigment white thing if you have one, but I didn't want to go that vibrant. I'm also going to add some splashes again by using the same ink and you can look at them as snow or even stars at the background. Now I'm going to grab the same paper that I cut out the houses and at the back I have a moon, which I'm going to use for this background. I'm just going to fuzzy cut it. There is also a moon in the chipboard uh, set if you want to use that instead. I know that many people for various reasons avoid fuzzy cutting Arthritis definitely been one of them, but fear not, always keep in mind that with a collection, with a paper bath, there are also matching die cut packs, either in just plain paper or in chipboard that you can definitely use instead of fuzzy cutting. So here I'm just mixing elements from the same paper. I am going to use a little bit of that border at the bottom of that paper that I cut out the houses and I'm going to stick them on top of that. I just loved that um, black and white um, strip as well as the red at the bottom. I think it matches nicely with the whole design. And then at the back I'm going to add some foam tape and stick it on top of my night sky. And then the whole thing again with foam tape on top of my craft card base. I do have to stick the moon down to finish off my scene. And the splatters I have already at the background do look like little stars. If you want and you do have a die that cuts out tiny little stars, you can cut them out from a piece of uh, leftover from your pattern papers and then stick them down. Another way to go would be to use some gems up at the sky or even some nouveau drops in gold to add some shine. From the paper that comes with lots and lots of sayings, I'm just cutting out the word joy, which I'm going to stick on top of the houses to finish off my card. And here is a close-up look on the card that I made. I did use this a lovely colorful town on an art journal that I shared. But in that case, I just fuzzy cut the same town out of the 12 by 12 pattern paper. And let's move on and make a third card. This time I'm going to play with the ornaments. Again, I grabbed the ornaments from the chipboard set so that I didn't have to fuzzy cut. Plus, they are already thick and I don't have to use foam tape at the back. However, if we take a look at the pattern paper included in this pad, you will see that those ornaments are pretty much the same size as the ones in the paper, so you can just fuzzy cut them if you like. As I always do, I'm going to pick a background pattern paper with colors that don't steal the thunder of my focal points. And since I always like to have some extra dimension, I did cut it in two pieces so that I can pop one of those pieces on top of the other. Just like I did with the rest of the cards, I'm going to ink up the edges with some vintage photo, both on my panel, as well as on my craft card base. 
I'm temporarily placing the ornaments on top of my background, trying to decide where everything is going to stay. And then with a marker, I'm just going to make a mark up at the top so I know exactly where they are supposed to go. And then with the black marker and my T-ruler, just to make sure that everything is straight, I'm going to draw some black lines as if they are the strings that are holding those ornaments. And then I'll just use glue at the back of the ornaments and stick them down. Again, no need for foam tape to add dimension. These are already thick. But uh, again, if you did die cut the ornaments from the paper pad, you can always add some foam tape at the back just to make them more uh, prominent and help them stand out even more. I have foam tape at the back of this panel. I'm going to stick it on my card base. And again, this is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And at the top, I'm going to add the other piece that I cut out from the same pattern paper, just to add that uh, feel of patchwork on my card. From the paper with the sayings, I cut out the word Mary, the word Christmas, and the number 25. And I will stick them down to add a sentiment that says Merry Christmas as well as some extra embellishments. I also have a leftover from this paper and I'm going to cut out little pieces of different colors so that I can tuck them underneath the top layer. And here is a close-up look on the third card that I made for today using the ornaments. If you love pattern papers like I do, definitely check out Stamperia collections. They have something for everyone and all their paper parts come with backgrounds as well as lovely focal points. And let's move on to the fourth card for today. Again, here is a paper that you can just cut out the piece where the um, tree is and it would make a perfect card front. However, as I always like to pop things out, I'm going to grab my scissors and cut out the tree. My card base again is made out of craft cardstock. I did ink up the edges just like I did with the rest of the cards and I'm adding some stamping. I'm not going for the perfect impression. I'm using a stamp that I had in my stash for ages and it adds just a little bit of text just to make the background look more interesting and not leave it as plain as it was. Now from the same pattern paper, I'm also going to cut out a few elements from the borders. These are all lovely and colorful and since this is a patchwork look and feel, I want to continue that all around my main card base. This is a leftover from a previous card that I made. I'm going to use that as well as other leftovers that I have. I'm just going to create layers so that I can add on top of all these layers my tree. And again, what makes this layering so easy is the fact that all the papers come from the same paper pad, so I know they are going to match together. And here is a reminder, if you are enjoying my videos, don't forget to like as well as comment, it really helps. And also make sure to hit that bell so that you get a notification whenever I post a new video. So all I'm doing here is just using some leftover, some scraps of the pattern paper and uh, sticking uh, little things underneath the main layers. And here is an afterthought. With my tweezers, I'm going to curl up the corner of my paper so that I can tuck underneath a cutout poinsettia, which I cut out from one of the pattern papers that I have already used, one of the scraps. For this card, I went with Merry Christmas as my sentiment that I cut out from that paper that is packed with sentiments and I also added a few stars here and there. And let's move on to the fifth card for today and of course I left the best focal point for the last card. If you want, you can definitely fuzzy cut the two cards and work on something similar that I'm making with those. Instead, I decided to go with the chipboard one just because it is slightly bigger. But I want to use this part of the pattern paper that has that lovely sentiment that says Christmas and cuts match. Both are made of pure magic. And this card is very easy to put together. I'm going to place at the bottom a piece of my leftover borders. 
This way I will cover up a little piece of that cut head that still shows. Then again I'm going to stick that with foam tape on my card base and my card is going to go on top by using some glue. All these five cards would make a great set, you can put them together and give them as a gift for other people to send them out. I will embellish this card with a few of the die cut chipboard stars. And I absolutely love how this card is looking. I have a bigger version of that from the 12x12 pattern paper and it's in my plans to use it somehow in my art journal. And here is a close-up look on the last card for today. You can see I did add a few scrap pieces of that paper in a couple of corners. And these were the cards for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired. Down below in the description area you will find the links to everything I used. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.